So I don't necessarily agree with all of Andrew Yang's policy positions, but he is such an incredibly personable and nice guy that you can't not like him. And at the Gun Sense Forum, basically he did something that other more focus group driven rehearsed candidates would never do. He actually demonstrated that he is capable of something that they are seemingly not. Human emotion. And this was a really touching moment that I wanted to share with you. My beautiful four-year-old daughter, Dela, was struck by a stray bullet March 2011. My son, my daughter's twin brother, witnessed what happened that day. She died two days later. Firearms are the second leading cause of death for children and teenagers in the U.S., but 4.6 million Amer American children live in homes with at least one gun that is loaded and unlocked, and hundreds of them gain access to a gun and unintentionally shoot themselves or someone else every year. As president, how would you address unintentional shootings by children? Thank you for that. Can I give you a hug? Is that be appropriate? <laughs> I have a six and three year old boy, I'm imagining. <laughs> I was imagining it was one of them that got shot and the other saw it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> the, the biggest downside of running for president for me has been that I don't get to see my family very much. So I get pictures, I FaceTime, I see pictures of my boys and just that scene that she described, I'm sorry, it's like very, very affecting. You're right that when there's a gun in the household, you're more likely to have a child get shot or the owner get shot than to kill, let's say, an intruder into the house. Those are just numbers. Um, those are just the facts. So one of the things we can do, and it's very hard to get into Americans' houses where all of these guns are, uh, but if we can, convince Americans that personalized guns are a good idea, then again, if you, the child gets a hold of the gun and they can't do anything with it, then it just becomes a very heavy, expensive prop. Uh, and that's something that we can push. One of my proposals is to actually help gun owners upgrade their guns to personalized guns free of charge. Because if we can do that, then again, if you're a gun owner, and gun owners are parents. Gun owners understand that, you know, and some of them are, are concerned. So if you say, hey, we'll upgrade your uh, guns for free, when we can do that. Like, you can upgrade the guns for free, and that would help make kids safer in our homes. I'm so sorry you um, had to... Uh, and that, that story should not be possible. Uh, I'm so sorry. I'll admit, and I don't want to admit this, when I first saw this, when I saw him tear up, it made me tear up. Because that was such... An emotional moment there you know for someone who's running for president to actually let his guard down like that to see the way that he was touched personally by a question I mean you rarely ever see this imagine if Joe Biden or Kamala Harris was asked that same question do you honestly believe that they would allow themselves to reveal their emotions like that they would say you know I offer you my condolences and they and they would pivot to their planned talking points that they have for gun violence. And certainly, you know, I'm sure that Andrew Yang's points about gun reform and personalized guns, I'm sure that he planned that out. I'm sure that this is something that he's talked about before. But for him to actually have his answer interrupted by just emotion, this is what I want to see in lawmakers. And I know that it doesn't seem like there's much policy substance to extract here, and maybe there isn't, but just in terms of like what we need is we need lawmakers to be able to listen to our complaints, our grievances, our criticisms, and respond accordingly and adapt. And Andrew Yang demonstrated that he is capable of that.
He's capable of listening to the concerns and responding in a very genuine and authentic way. And look, this isn't the first time. For example, when he came on my program, I shared my story about my dad who's on Social Security and I posed the question to him, does it seem fair that my dad has to choose between universal basic income and his Social Security when he worked his whole life and paid into Social Security? Doesn't it seem unfair that he wouldn't get that extra 1000 but someone who makes, you know, 100000 a month would? And Andrew Yang was very honest in his answer in saying, you know, this wasn't something that he had considered. And about a month later, he actually amended his UBI program so it offered UBI on top of Social Security. Now, I'm in no way taking credit for that because this is a common criticism of UBI, of his UBI in particular, so I'm sure that he heard that before, but just the fact that he was willing to listen to criticism of his signature policy proposal and amend it to adapt to align with one of our biggest concerns, that really is impressive. Oftentimes, just from the standpoint of being a human being, when you get criticism, even if it's constructive, we are inclined to shut down. We are inclined to put up that barrier to have cognitive dissonance and just accept that we're perfect and they're wrong. But what Andrew Yang has demonstrated is that he's a human being, he's authentic. And what he does is he listens and he genuinely adapts. And he's been adding to his policy agenda, you know, as the campaign went on, as he talks to more people. And I really find this commendable. And even if I still don't support Andrew Yang, and I don't necessarily agree with the way that he would implement UBI, because I don't want it to be used as a Trojan horse to gut our social safety net. I think it should be offered on top of all of our welfare programs. But nonetheless, you know, just what he's doing here in being a human being in adapting in his willingness to listen i really hope that other people learn from andrew yang who are running for president and do what he's doing here i'm looking at you kamala harris joe biden cory booker because for some reason democratic party strategists they still are instructing candidates to pretend like it's the 1990s and you've got to use your thumb to point so you're not being too overly aggressive and you've got to be rehearsed and have the person you know the perfect tagline with the perfect timing and those days are done we are in an anti-establishment era where when you do things like this you earn respect because you show us that you're a human being you're not a robot you are a human being and you are capable of being affected by the things that we tell you that tells me that we can move you we can get you to listen to us on a particular issue incredibly important i hope that more candidates let their guard down in this way and follow andrew yang's lead here because this was such a touching moment it was great